Good evening, hockey fans, and welcome to AAA Midget Hockey League action here at the Brandon Sportsplex. We have the AAA Midget Wheat Kings and the Yellowhead Chiefs going up against each other tonight. And Marshall, Brandon is coming off of a huge, huge win over Norman. What, what do you think was going right for them? Well, they certainly had Nolan Ritchie on their side, getting scoring six of their points for them with three goals and three assists. So I'd say he certainly had a lot to do with that win they had last week. And certainly their offense has been bolstered by the return of Lyndon McCallum, one of last year's leading goal scorers. So at this point, I would say this team is looking like one of the best in the league. In fact, the standings would tell us that they are third in the league and only a one point behind Eastman and the Bruins. And the Wheat Kings have a game in hand. So you're not, you're, you're definitely not worried about where this team sits offensively. Absolutely, they certainly have a lot going for them. And then on the other side, uh, Yellowhead has been a very, a very good team as well. And I'm not sure where exactly they sit in the standings. I'm going to take a look at that. But they've, they've got some decent chances for them. And you, you never know. Hockey is a game where you can, you can go into a game and you never know how it's going to end, end up. That is absolutely true. So Yellowhead sits with a record of 7-6, and six, which, while not the best, is still a decent total. And again, I have, I'm going to repeat myself. This Hockey is a game where you can come into a game, no, and no matter how much of an underdog you seem to be, you can still escape with a win. Absolutely. A lot goes on in those, those three long periods we've got going on. 60 minutes of hockey coming up here on the Manitoba Sports Network, and we're going to bring it all to you here from the Brandon Sportsplex. So starting up tonight for the Yellowhead Chiefs, they have Jeremy Dukowicz starting in net. And Dukowicz, he's been a pretty solid player throughout this season so far. Six and four record and a 2.68 goals against average, which is pretty solid. He's had a bit of tough luck in the past couple games, but definitely hoping to break that funk tonight. And on the other side, Trent Miner will be starting in net for the Wheat Kings. Trent Miner has just been standing on his head for the Wheat Kings so far this season. How, I, I honestly have no idea how he does it. It's certainly impressive to see firsthand how incredible he is at what he does. So the last game Trent Miner played in was an eight to two win playing against the Norman North Stars. And he play, also played the previous game which was a two to one win over the Winnipeg Wild. Those are, so the Wheat Kings are capable of blowing out their opponents and 
keeping it close and winning close games as well, which is definitely a talent you want to have when you're playing in a, in a league of this talent level. Speaking of talent level, I just learned today Trent Miner was actually a first round pick in the Bantam draft of the Vancouver Giants of the WHL. And this is, this is a guy who's three years younger than me. Three years. And he's already got that going for him. So congratulations to Trent Miner on his draft status and wish him all the best of luck tonight. And we also would like to wish Jeremy Dut Dutkowicz the best tonight as well. Brandon Wheat Kings come into this game with an 11-2 record, which is pretty solid, good for third place in the league. That and is certainly a solid place to be. Absolutely. And they have a game in hand on the people above them. Both of the people above them have an overtime loss, which is to be expected. But the Wheat Kings have not lost in extra time yet. So I, I expect fully expect this game to be a nail-biter, but only time will tell. And we're going to tell that story here on the Manitoba Sports Network. This game brought to you in part by Pantages Hair Salon. So we will bring you all of this AAA Midget Hockey League action when that game gets going in just a little bit. Sportsplex, where we have AAA Midget Hockey League action. My name is Jared Thiessen. And I'm Marshall Littlefield. And tonight we have the Brandon AAA Midget Wheat Kings and the Yellowhead Chiefs going head-to-head -head in what should be an exciting matchup. This game should be getting underway in just a little bit. And before we get started, Marshall, let's make sure we get in the starting lineups. So, starting for Brandon, who do we have, Marshall? Well. We've got Trent Miner starting in net, and uh, Damon Hunt, Rylan Thiessen, Carter Sawchuk, Brett Paddock, and Lyndon McCallum. And starting for Yellowhead in net, Jeremy Dut Dutkowicz, who is number 30 for Yellowhead. And then on defense, Carter Nychuk and Braden Rooks. And on the forward lines, Zane McDonald, Logan Watton, and Brian Mentuck. Should be an exciting matchup, and we're getting ready for it.
since the anthem singing the anthem is done, we're gonna get into the hockey action. Lennon McCallum playing in his just his third game with the Midget Wheat Kings this season after a brief stint with the MWHL Wheat Kings. And exciting, as exciting as that was for him, I'm sure he's gotta be happy to be back playing with guys that he knows and hopefully looking, hopefully an, another run at uh, Midget Hockey League Championship. So lining up for the face-off, number 16, Carter Sawchuk. And the Wheat Kings will take that one, and it'll be sent all the way in by Ryland Thiessen. McCallum rushes into the corner, and now there's a battle along the wall for it. Still moving around, and it gets back to Damon Hunt, and Hunt can't keep it in. Hunt will skate it all the way back to his own blue line, pass it off to Thiessen, who will turn it, turn it right around. Puck sent off to the wall for McCallum. McCallum rushing in on the left side, has it poked away from him, and the Chiefs will carry it away. Here come the, can the Chiefs again, that's Mensak. He skates in and looks like he got hauled down. And a little slow to get up is number 17, Brian Mensak, but he will get back up and out of the zone. Puck gets sent back into Brandon's end. Miner will play it, and it goes up to Brett Paddock. Paddock will pass it away and into the other team's end and the puck will stay in the end and Kaspik picks it up but he can't get the pass away and some early action here Wee Kings crashing the net but it is covered up by number 30 Jeremy Dukowicz good offensive sequence and some good chances both ways. Yellowhead definitely had a good opportunity to score there. And Brandon also on the rebound had a good opportunity. So we've got a still got a 0-0 hockey game, but some exciting chances both ways. I agree, and this is certainly fairly off in the game for us, for this sort of thing to be happening. So it, this should be an exciting game. Drayson Collier in to take the draw. He can't, he gets a hold of it, but it'll be lost and the Chiefs will pick it up behind their own net. Here they come out of their own end. Yellowhead Chiefs carry it across center line. And he got hauled down and looks like that's gonna be a call against number seven, Cole Jordan. And it'll be a tripping call. So Cole Jordan will take a two minute minor for tripping as it looked like Parker Malchuk had a decent chance to walk in there, number 24 for Yellowhead. And Jordan hauled him down. So, first power play of the game for the Yellowhead Chiefs. Draw is in Brandon's end. Holding it along the blue line now, Yellowhead. They have, they've got it along the blue line and now it's up the half wall. Back to the blue line, there's a fake shot. And that one is fired just a little bit wide of the net. Yellowhead with a good opportunity to shoot right off the bat. And that one comes out and Nolan Ritchie pokes it past center. And Yellowhead rebounds very quickly and they're back in Brandon's end already. Chad Nychuk with the quick rebound. And here come the Wheat Kings, they've picked it up and Nolan Ritchie will fire that one all the way down and they'll go for line changes. So here, comes, here come the Chiefs again. They're across center line and there's a bit of a whack. By, and Drayson Collier put his man into the Wheat Kings penalty box. And it looks like that's gonna be an elbowing call against Collier. Chad Nychuk got thrown into the bench but I'm not sure what's happening. It's, looks like Brett Paddock is going to the bench, going to the box. So it's a five on three for Yellowhead, an early five on three. A minute eight left on that penalty to Cole Jordan. So it's Drayson Collier, Keegan Morrison, 
can't see the number of the other player out there. But Jordan and Paddock in the box. Jake Thompson out there, the other man out there. And Yellowhead can't keep it in off the face off, so they'll retreat back to center. So here they come. Here they come again. It's the Yellowhead Chiefs. They'll bring it across the blue line. They're at the half wall, and they'll fire it in. And a good breakup of the play there by Thompson as Yellowhead had, Yellowhead had an opportunity for a one-timer. Nychuk with the slap shot. That goes off a leg in front. And Yellowhead will pick it up again. They're at the half wall now, firing and trying to go across ice, but couldn't get the pass through. So Yellowhead with the shot, and Miner makes the save, and that puck will go out of play. So 38 seconds of play on that one, and a, a number of good opportunities for Yellowhead to score, just couldn't get it to go through. We Kings are certainly using a strong defense right now, and that's working out and, well for And them. they have to. Being down two men early in the game is not a position you want to be in. Absolutely Nolan Ritchie not. was in for the draw, but he can't get a hold of it. So Yellowhead will get it along the far half wall. That puck will be slid right through the slot, and it goes right into the middle, and Trent Miner makes the save. Yellowhead barely holds that puck in, and there's another shot, but that one will be blocked by Damon Hunt, and he's hurt, but he can't get off now. There's another shot, but that one will whistle just wide of the net. Yellowhead will pick it up, and they'll go in behind. There's the pass to his man. Damon Hunt had a good hold of it, and he will throw it all the way out into Yellowhead's end, where they will pick it up and bring it out from behind their own net. Parker Malchuk will carry it out of his, own, his end and across center. He'll throw it across the blue line, and Yellowhead will pick it up at the half wall. There's a shot through traffic, and Miner made the save. Malchuk again, he had it, passed it away, and that shot will be blocked by Ryland Thiessen, and he will fire it all the way out again, and Jeremy Dukwich will come out to play it. And he gets hauled down by his own man, and he's got his mask off. Why? Why did, why did the ref let it let them play that? I'm not sure what's going on here. That did not look good for Jeremy Dukovic. That was, that was a mental error on the part of the Yellowhead Chiefs, and they're gonna, they're gonna get called for tripping. Yellowhead just got called for tripping. That's after such a, a long power play. You what? We Kings Why? were doing strong before. It's no and now, what now they have now. a minute 59 on the power play. Paddock carries it out. And now the puck is at Brandon's blue line. Puck picked up by Paddock, and he'll skate it out across the line and fire it into the corner for Lyndon McCallum. McCallum lost it, but it'll go in behind Yellowhead's net. Hunt leaves it at the blue line for McCallum. Back to Hunt, and that one will trickle back across the blue line. Hunt leaves it for McCallum. McCallum will fire it across to Paddock. Paddock can't hang on to it, but Nolan Rishi grabs it. And there's McCallum again, and a shot, but Dukowicz made the glove save on a low shot that had a good chance. So 40 seconds off of this penalty to the Yellowhead Chiefs. It was Malchuk. Parker Malchuk got called for tripping on the penalty. And that's that's a that's a bad penalty to take when it's you're very on the power play. For them. So the Wheat Kings Hunt will hold it hold it in at the blue line again. There's McCallum again. Hunt at the blue line. He's got a hold of it, and now it's Paddock. Richie, there's a shot and sticked away by Duke, Duke Witch. And there's another opportunity for the Wheat Kings and uh, Mask comes off again. Duke Witch, Mask, he needs, to, he needs to tighten the straps on there. That's... No kidding, that's twice in less than two minutes apart. 
twice, that's not that's not what those masks are meant for. Those things are. I played goalie for a couple of years. Those things are meant to stay on your head. Yeah. And you, I couldn't pull mine off with my blocker if I wanted to. That's the only thing between you and a puck to the face. Sawchuk wins the draw. He get it, got it back to Calder Anderson. There's a shot off the blocker of Dukowicz, and he wasn't sure he made that save, but he did. So Yellowhead will just rag the puck now. They have it at the blue line. They'll fire it all the way down, and Trent Miner will pick it up. So Miner covers up. And with 37 seconds left on this Brandon Wheat Kings power play, we'll have a face-off. And that one will go to the right of Trent Miner, his blocker hand. I always preferred having face-offs to my right because I was a left-catching goalie. And the, you can move your glove a lot more quickly than you can move your blocker. That would make sense. So the Wheat Kings win the draw, and Keegan Morrison will put the puck in behind the net to Calder Anderson. Anderson goes back to Morrison, and Morrison will put that puck up to his man. And Drayson Collier had it out in front, but he couldn't get the shot away, and Keegan Morrison will have to bring it back out. Morrison has the puck, and he passes off to Sawchuk. Sawchuk will carry it in, and he'll try to go around to the defender, and he drove to the net, but he couldn't get the shot on net. There's Sawchuk. He's got it again. He'll throw it into the corner for Drayson Collier. Collier can't pick it up. Collier, he has it again in behind the net. And it looks like he just got hauled down, but no call on that. Now the puck is in the corner. Four men battling for it. Now it comes out to the half wall. And Yellowhead will chop it out. Morrison will get it out. And Dukowicz tries to make the easy glove save, but it bounces out of his glove and to his defender. So the Wheat Kings have the puck now at their own blue line as Yellowhead tried to clear it all the way down. Thompson goes back to Cole Jordan. And Cole Jordan's pass is intercepted, but he gets it back. And the Wheat Kings will carry it out again. That's Mitch Thiessen who fires it in or Jared Twerdeklib, rather. And here come the Chiefs again. They're out across the blue line, and they'll just fire it down into Brandon's end. Trent Miner will play it up to his man at the wall. Looks like Braden Michaelchuk. Thompson will play it in behind his net back to Jordan. Cole Jordan tries to pass, but it was off a defender's leg. And Twerdeklib takes a high hit there at the, or Michaelchuk, rather, Wheat Kings now have it in the corner. Yellowhead will get it and across the blue line. And now across center. Throws it down into Brandon's end. Miner comes out to play it and he'll throw it around the wall. That puck comes out to the blue line but not completely out. And looks like Yellowhead will still keep it in. Puck was at the blue line. Wheat Kings chasing it. And... That one goes all the way down. And no icing on that one. So will we remain in play? We Kings pick it up after an attempted tip. Damon Hunt. But they'll give it away to Yellowhead again. And Yellowhead will just chop it out again. That was number 24, Parker Malchuk. And Malchuk will retreat behind his own net to pick it up again. Wheat Kings with a solid, solid interception on the pass. They just couldn't make anything happen. Miner will play it off the boards and it'll come up to Brett Paddock. Paddock tried to give it to Sawchuk, but here come the Chiefs again, driving wide. And Paddock will pick that one up again. So here comes Sawchuk. Sawchuk plays that one and it's deflected away, but into the Chiefs' end. And Thompson will pick it up again at center. And Jordan passes that one in and it'll be thrown into the end by Brett Paddock. The Chiefs recoiling again and they'll get it out to center, but no further, and it'll be picked up by the Wheat Kings. Now Collier has it in the end, and there's Tanner Morrison.
Tanner Morrison had a good opportunity to get in, but couldn't beat his defender. So now the Chiefs will bring it out across their blue line and dump it into Brandon's end. Chasing, and with the hit there is Brian Mentak, who got hit earlier with a shot. And here come the Chiefs again. They've got they've got it at the half wall now. Wheat Kings, and it's back to the blue line for Malchuk. And Mentuck with a shot, and I'm not sure that it got through. Went up and hit the glass. So here comes Malchuk, and it'll be icing against the Wheat Kings. Wheat Kings didn't have a great off, didn't have much going for them defensively, and they will keep up the defensive zone play with a face off to the left of Trent Minor. So taking the draw is Colby Joseph for Yellowhead. Wheat Kings grabbed it, Mason Kaspik, and Kaspik will get it across center line. Here they come into the Yellowhead offensive end, uh, defensive end rather. And the Wheat Kings will maintain possession. Now Yellow, now they give it away to Yellowhead, and here they here comes Colby Joseph, and he takes the shot, but it's high, and Miner will make the save. Solid, solid period so far for Yellowhead, and not so much for the Wheat Kings. Wheat Kings and Yellowhead equal in shots, but opportunities are looking a little different. I'd say that the, the, the Wee Kings defense is certainly fairly strong, whereas uh, the Chiefs offense might be a little more of their strong suit today. That's, that's definitely the way it's looking. Richie in for the draw, but he can't get a hold on it. Blocker save there by Trent Miner. Here's Jackson Orr. Orr will pass it up to Calder Anderson. Anderson goes to Nolan Ritchie, who fires in eat, uh, just a floater. And Dukowicz, his glove hand, just not catching those pucks right now. But he made the save and freezes for a faceoff. As long as he's stopping him from going in. Exactly. <laughs> he's he's doing that. Yeah, he's you don't you don't want to let in a shot like that from that far out. You certainly don't. So Carter Sawchuk in for the draw. He'll get it, and the Wheat Kings just can't hold it in. Here's Lyndon McCallum. He'll pass it down to Brett Paddock, who will fire it into Yellowhead's end. Pick it up in behind. And the Chiefs will get it out across their own blue line and skate it through center. They've got it across Brandon's blue line now. And there's a shot, and right in the chest. And Trent Miner will make that save. Shots are tied at seven apiece. Eight minutes and 36 seconds to go in this first period. And to be honest, this is kind of what I expected. I don't know. We've got some fairly evenly matched teams, it would seem. That's, that's definitely the way it's looking to me. Because while we are seeing the puck in Brandon's end for the majority of this, this period, they have not been letting the Chiefs get any shots in. And that is a strong suit of the Wheat Kings. Absolutely. The Wheat Kings win the draw, and it'll come out to the half wall. Wheat Kings try to send it out. Drayson Collier will get it out, and Tanner Morrison brings it across the blue line. Morrison, he'll drag it into the corner. And now a battle in behind the net. Mason Kaspik. Kaspik battling with Mor along with Morrison, and Jackson Orr will play it carry it in behind and he'll throw it around trying to get it to Keegan Morrison but the Chiefs will retreat it and Malchuk took it away from Dukovic that's that's an interesting play I don't know that I agree with it but the Chiefs have it in behind their own net and they're ragging it out now or they tried to and it looked like Morrison was in there again causing trouble Tanner Morrison definitely a uh, and there's a long high shot, and Miner will make the glove save. So Yellowhead now trying the strategy that the Wheat Kings are employing. Just fire it from a long ways out and <laughs> hope you get a bounce. I'd have to say, it doesn't seem to be working for them. No, that's 
that's that's a strategy that I I I don't think I've seen that employed in any level of hockey before. But I suppose when all else fails, might as well try everything. You got if if it's getting you shots, at some point a shot goes in, and that's really what both of these teams need right now. Absolutely. So the Wheat Kings will get it out, and there's Brett Paddock again. He'll fire that one in, and they have it in behind. Uh-oh. And there's a whistle, and it looks like a hook is going to be called. And that's going to go against Yellowhead. Yellowhead number 21, Jake Poole, is going to get the going to get the gate for hooking. Another another instance of a team taking a penalty that they just can't really afford right now. And it's, Absolutely not. And it, this should be interesting. In a tight game like this, you don't you you can't afford to take bad penalties like that. So the Wheat Kings will go on the power play for the second time tonight. And Nolan Ritchie will go in for the draw. He can't take it, so Yellowhead will get it in the corner, and it will they will squeeze it out behind the Wheat King number 17, Brent Paddock. So Miner will play it. And he'll go to number 16. Or number 15 rather, Damon Hunt. Brett Paddock puts it into the middle for Nolan Ritchie, but Ritchie had a stick in his feet and couldn't get a hold of it. Damon Hunt now plays it to the other side, and the Wheat Kings hoping for a deflection, but just couldn't get it. Hunt again at the blue line. Hunt goes across to Paddock. Paddock with the shot, and that one is deflected by a leg in front, and McCallum will pass it back to Hunt. Lyndon McCallum goes across to Hunt, and it's back to McCallum again, and that another one off the leg of the Yellowhead defender. And McCallum finally gets one across to Paddock. And that's a shot from Richie, or a deflection rather, that just went over the net. And the puck will come back to Hunt. And Hunt will take the shot, and it deflects out of play. So this power play is brought to you by GT Hockey. And the Wheat Kings have taken full advantage of the, the man off the ice, getting some decent offensive chances, just nothing doing. Well, Jared, they still have another 59 seconds, and they we've do. only seen half of it. I appreciate that pun. So the Wheat Kings get the puck back in, and it'll go right back out, and Calder Anderson will pick it up and retreat to his blue line. So Anderson will fire that one up, and it goes deep into Yellowhead's end. Carter Sawchuk is in battling with Drayson Collier. Collier turns around and fires, and Dukowicz will make the save. So Dukowicz, definitely a story of the game right now for Yellowhead. He's if if bobbled pucks were mistakes, then he's made a couple. But he's he's stopped nine shots so far, and it's been a solid effort from him. He's certainly doing his job. Absolutely. So Yellowhead picks it up behind their own net and they'll fire it off the wall and out all the way down. And it'll come back to Trent Miner, who will cover it up. And with 20 seconds left on this power play, that certainly was not a bright shining spot for the Wheat Kings. But they'll get an, another 20 seconds opportunity to put one past Dukovic. Yellowhead's penalty kill has done a pretty good job making sure the Wheat Kings at least have a tough time putting shots to the net. Absolutely, I've been crediting the Wheat Kings defense, but the Chiefs have certainly shown some promise there. There's a bit of a hold there by Malchuk, but that's not called, and Trayson Collier will battle for it, and the Wheat Kings will get it in the corner. Sawchuk throws it down to Collier again. Collier twisting and turning, and he goes to number 10, Ryland Thiessen. And now it's a battle in the court and behind the net. Now Collier will throw it back, back to Thiessen. Thiessen tries to throw it out front and that's deflected in behind. And Malchuk picks it up and he gets laid out by Ryland Thiessen. And Thiessen now throwing the body around, which as a big man, that's what you want him to do. Ryland Thiessen, ah, he, actually not as big as I thought, but 
bigger than a lot of the guys on this Yellowhead roster. Shot from the half wall, and Trent Miner makes the glove save. So Yellowhead now leads the shots 10 to 9. So Miner has made 10 saves, Dukowicz has made 9. Wheat Kings now in the faceoff. And that was Mitch Thiessen. But he can't pick it up. Yellowhead with the shot, but it's blocked by a Wheat Kings defender. Now it's battled for in the corner. And here comes Thiessen again. Mitch Thiessen throws it off the wall, but it doesn't get out. And Yellowhead has an odd man rush there. And the save made by Trent Miner. Wheat Kings give it away. And that shot from number 10, Pierce Martin, stopped in the bread basket by Trent Miner. So 12 shots now for Yellowhead, and they're looking like the better offensive team right now, but until somebody scores, you can't really say that one team has been better offensively than the other. It's now the face-off to the left of Miner, and Yellowhead will get that one away. And here come the Wheat Kings now. They have it across center. They're, it's Lynn and McCallum. McCallum drives way wide and tried to drive the net. And the puck gets away from him. And Yellowhead will bring it back across the Wheat Kings blue line. Yellowhead now forced to return, retreat. And they will fire it back in an attempt to get it in. But it's intercepted. And McCallum has the puck again. And he'll twist into the corner. Jackson Hornow with it on the blue line. And Brett Paddock picks it up. Paddock. He'll fire it into, put it into the corner for Carter Sawchuk. Sawchuk puts it out and it's through! Brett Paddock! Brett Paddock with the goal. Carter Sawchuk set him up perfectly. And Paddock goes five hole on number 30, Jeremy Dukowicz. That's an amazing goal that I did not expect after that that was incredible that was it came as a surprise to me so Wheat Kings first on the board that's Paddock from who was it from Sawchuk Carter Sawchuk Drayson Collier now in to take the face off so that goal brought to you by my phone, your Telus dealer. Keegan Morrison also getting a credit for an assist on that one. And now there's a battle along the half wall. And there's a shot, and Miner will stick that one right away. It's a good long point shot. And Trent Miner made the save. So now there's a battle along the far half wall and the puck will squirt out across the blue line. Here's Malchuk again. And he, his man got stood up at the blue line. That's Colby Joseph again. And the Wheat Kings now laying the body in hard. So here come the Wheat Kings. They have the puck in the corner and they'll pick it up in behind the net. And now there's a scrum. Nolan Ritchie couldn't get a hold of it, and he'll slam into the boards with nobody there. So Yellowhead forced to just throw it out. And Ritchie picks it up at the blue line. He's complete, he's left wide open. And there's Cole Jordan, and he'll put the shot wide of the net. Wheat Kings now. There's Ritchie again getting involved offensively. Yellowhead will get the puck in deep into the Wheat King's end. There's Jake Thompson playing his man. And Yellowhead will throw it right back in. It's picked up by the Wheat Kings and they will... Oh, they tried to put it out to center, but they just can't get it out. Yellowhead. They've got the puck at the blue line and the puck will hit a man and deflect just wide of the net. So now Yellowhead has it in the close corner. And there's a shot from in tight. Very, very close shot. And Trent Miner makes the save again. So Miner, a first round pick of the Vancouver Giants of the WHL 
20th overall in that in the Bantam draft. That's he was the first Manitoban picked. That, in that is draft. really impressive. Wheat Kings will win the draw. Jackson Orr will throw it behind to Trent, uh, not Trent Meyer, Jake Thompson. Brett Paddock will put that one off the wall, and he'll pick it up again at center as the Yellowhead clears it back out. Dukowicz will cover as the puck slides all the way down into his crease. Wheat Kings defense not exactly happy with how that previous sequence went, I'm sure of it. But they can put that behind them now as there's a face-off to the left of Jeremy Dukowicz. So McCallum is in for the face-off and he'll put that one in deep and pick it up. McCallum in a battle now along the in the corner and Sawchuk will bring it out. Carter Sawchuk. He tried to center it for Brett Paddock, but it was deflected and came all the way back out to the blue line. So McCallum will deflect that one in deep again, and Wheat Kings give chase. But Yellowhead will pick it up, and looks like another hooking call against Yellowhead. This is their third penalty, I think? That is their third penalty. Third penalty of the game for Yellowhead. And there's still 52 seconds to go in this first period. Sorry, forgive me. That's their second penalty. Then. So it, Okay, it is their second penalty. <laughs> so this power play for Brandon Wheat Kings Hockey brought to you by GT Hockey. And the lineup for this power play looks like it's going to be Paddock. Or do they know, or do they even know who it's gonna be? Looks like it's gonna be Anderson, Collier, Sawchuck, along with number 10, Rylan Thiessen, and number 27, Keegan Morrison. Collier wins the draw and it'll go back to the Wheat Kings blue line. Collier Anderson. Anderson will fire that one back down. And there's a shot from the Wheat Kings, but it'll deflect off Dukowicz and out of play. Sachuk got wide open on that power play. Right, right in the um, right in the Ovechkin's wheelhouse, <laughs> as they as some would call it. And unfortunately his shot just a little bit high and goes out of play, but that's only 11 seconds off that power play. That's so right, they've got Jerry. lots more chances. Here's Calder Anderson. He'll rush that one right in across the blue line. Twisting and turning at the blue line, and now he carries it deep. And he sh he roofs his shot, and that's goal number two. The Wheat Kings score on the power play. 20 seconds into that power play with a goal from Calder Anderson. Keegan Morrison with the goal or Calder Anderson Calder with Anderson. the goal. And Carter Sawchuk and Keegan Morrison with the assists. What a goal. That, that was a tremendous shot. And right over the blocker hand of Jeremy Dukowicz. Wow. So it's 2-0 Wheat Kings off that power play goal. And that goal brought to you by my phone, your Telus dealer. Assist number 10. Rylan and number 16, Carter Sawchuk. Time of the goal. All right, well, I sit corrected. It was Rylan Thiessen and Carter Sawchuk setting that one up. But Calder Anderson still scored it. Yes. So Yellowhead will get the puck across their blue line, but it'll be fired right back in, and Dukowicz will come out to play it. So Yellowhead has it in behind their net, and they'll just waste the rest of the time on the clock. And that is it for the first period here at the Brandon Sportsplex. Currently the Brandon AAA Midget Wheat Kings lead two to nothing. We'll be back in just a little bit with your first period summary and more here on the Manitoba Sports Network. SAR Sport and Recreation in Steinbeck. We're the Husqvarna Motorcycle, Polaris ORV and Polaris Slingshot dealer. Along with full sales of new and used, we offer service, parts and sales for everything. Come and see us in Steinbeck.
I'm Melanie uh, from Melanie Bond and Athletic Therapy. I deal with rehab here and one of the treatments that I use is massage, some mobilizations and there are many other techniques that I take care of to help heal injuries. I treat sports injuries, workplace injuries, motor vehicle accident injuries and I direct bill to MPI, WCB and other third party insurers. Thank you, come see us. Welcome to MB Seeds. I'm Matt and this is B, and we're a family run business. We've been operating since 2012 and we sell canola, soybeans, corn, wheat, barley, oats and peas. We also run a cleaning facility on site just south of Low Farm where we can clean almost anything that you can grow. Come check us out today. Well, good evening and welcome back to Manitoba AAA Midget Hockey League on the Manitoba Sports Network. My name is Jared Thiessen, and right now I am joined by Dylan Halliday. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you. So, Dylan, before we get too much into tonight's game, you're coming off of an amazing game against uh, Norman. Yeah. What, what, was, uh, what was the mentality like on your bench uh, to know that you had the offensive firepower and that you were showing it in uh, such a great game like that? Well, last year we came off a uh, tough defeat to them in uh, in Norman, so we wanted to prove what we can do and uh, try to light the lamp a little bit. And you certainly did that with a 14-5 to win. And Nolan Ritchie and yourself had amazing games. Keegan Watkins McIntyre having a great game for himself as well. Yeah. A, a tremendous team effort. And tonight seems to be no different. Your, your, your teammates are setting each other up and they're, they're not missing on many passes. So what do you guys spend a certain amount of time just working on your passing game specifically? Uh, yeah, definitely. Our coach uh, really works on us with uh, moving the puck and trying to use everyone out on the ice. So that's what we try to do uh, every game. And of course, you guys come into this game on a five game winning streak. So what do you think you're gonna have to do to make sure that continues tonight? 
Uh, just keep working hard, doing what we do. Uh, we're an offensive team, got a good goalie. Uh, we can keep this thing as going as long as we want. Awesome, thank you very much. Right, thank you. We'll be back in just a little bit with your first period summary here on the Manitoba Sports Network. This interview brought to you by CM Engraving. Thank you. to the Brandon Sports Flex here in Brandon for AAA Midget Hockey League action. We are here with your first period summary. So Marshall, that first period, a lot of action going both ways and Brandon just seems to come out as the as the luckier team on that. Absolutely, and interestingly, interestingly enough, the Wheat Kings actually had less shots on goal than the Chiefs did with only 12 shots on goal, whereas the Chiefs had 13. And but still managed to come out on top. Which is an impressive in and of itself. And then, I guess luck, maybe not so much luck on the part of the power play, which seemed, the Yellow, Yellowhead Chiefs just didn't seem to have the discipline in the first period that the Wheat Kings had. No, they really didn't. Uh, though they, they had uh, two power plays, the Wheat Kings did, and uh, the Chiefs actually had one where they were five on three right off the bat, but uh, even then they didn't manage to pull anything out of there. The Wheat Kings had a strong defense, and uh, it, was, it was good that they did. So the Wheat Kings escaped the first period leading to nothing on goals by Calder Anderson. And who was the other one from? That was... Uh, uh, oh, that was uh, Brett Paddock. So Brett Paddock comes away with a goal, Calder Anderson as well, for a 2-0 lead and well-deserved, I would say. Oh, absolutely. And as for our assists, we had uh, Keegan Morris Morrison and uh, Rylan Thiessen. And uh, Carter Sawchuk actually got uh, an assist on both of those goals. Huh. So Carter Sawchuk, definitely a player to watch during the second and third periods. Absolutely, he's certainly doing his job. <laughs> and of course, the, the two goalies. Jeremy, Jeremy Dukwich has had a couple bad bounces, but he's been outstanding, he's, as well as Trent Miner. They have both been put to the test today, and uh, for the most part, they're passing. Absolutely. So we will come back with the second period of action here on the Manitoba Sports Network from the Brandon Sportsplex.
Hi, I'm Cassandra Curie with Fire and Fitness. We're located in Ildishay, Manitoba. We do everything from personal training, group training classes, yoga and flexible steel. We also focus on young athletes. We do not only just the strength and conditioning, but the agility, power, rotational control and strength, and flexibility, stability, and mobility is always super important. You can find us at fairmfitness.ca and come check us out. Flex here in Brandon for Midget AAA Hockey League action. We have the Brandon AAA Midget Wheat Kings and the Yellowhead Chiefs going at it. This is second period action. So they'll be lining up for the face-off. You know, Jared, we had an exciting first period and I'm certainly interested to see what this one's going to have in store for us. Absolutely. The second period brought to you by Melanie Bonin. Drayson Collier lining up for the face-off against Colby Joseph. And Joseph wins the draw, and Yellowhead will get it right off to start the second period. Miner comes out to play the puck, and he'll throw the puck all the way around the, the boards, and it'll sneak off Drayson Collier. And there's a bit of a low bridging on Drayson Collier, but... No penalty call on that one. So there's a battle now. Tanner Morrison can't keep up, can't get the puck, and the Yellowhead Chiefs will carry it across the center line and into Brandon's end. Cole Jordan will fire that one out, and it will go all the way down into Yellowhead's end for icing. Marshall, the Chiefs come out of the first period leading in shots. They should be, they should, they probably should be better off than they are. The Wheat Kings defense has just been that good. They've certainly been doing their job and uh, well, they do it well. So Malchuk has the puck across at the blue line and that it'll go just over the net and deflect back off the glass. Wheat Kings will carry it out of their own end. Collier will get it and fire it down. So the Chiefs rebound from their own end. And Lyndon McCallum with the interception. And the goal! McCallum scores unassisted as he intercepts the pass. Coming away with a breakaway for the goal. McCallum with his first of the night. Third of the season. Wow. And just just a tough break for Yellowhead as they their pass. McCallum just got a, his stick on it. And things are not looking good for them right now. I, no, Yellowhead definitely got the short end of the stick on that one. I can't Fun imagine intended. their spirits are high. We can go score by number 18, Lyndon Chiefs will chase the puck into a weak king's end. Under the goal, 18. And now they have it at the half wall and the Wheat Kings will pick it up and they'll go down the ice. So Malchuk will, not Malchuk, uh, Nychuk rather, picks it up and it'll go all the way down for an icing against Yellowhead. So the Wheat Kings with a good opportunity here. That goal, such, such great speed from McCallum to be able to beat uh, Dukowicz on that one. He was just a flash of light in there, and he was out of there immediately. And the refs are going to call that one back. Wheat Kings were just a little off the line. So here's Nolan Ritchie in for the faceoff. Ritchie will win that one back. And Yellowhead got a hold of it, but they couldn't get it out, and the Wheat Kings will put the play in behind the net. Colin Cook had a handle on it, but he couldn't keep it. 
and the puck will be given away to the Wheat Kings, and Yellowhead will get it again, and now it's in their own end. They're behind the net. Nychuk with the pass attempt, and it'll actually get out of the end, out of Yellowhead's end. But the Wheat Kings will go on offense again, and they'll try to chase it into Yellowhead's end. Here's Damon Hunt. He's got the puck at the blue line. He fires it in behind, and Calder Anderson will come away with it. Now it's to Ryland Thiessen, and there's a deflection out front, and it looked like a good attempt for Colin Cook, and the Wheat Kings with another shot attempt. And I'm not sure what got blown down there, but I'm not sure, Jared. Well, whatever the case, it'll be a face-off in Yellowhead's end. And a little bit of a discussion with the refs at Yellowhead's bench. But nothing happening. Seems like they sorted it out. Looks like it. So we will get back into action here. Mitch Thiessen in for the draw. And Yellowhead is, Yellowhead's man will get kicked out. So now it's Logan Watton. Watton lost, loses the draw. So it goes to Jake Thompson who, with the shot. And Dukowicz makes the save. Not a, not a terribly hard shot. Just kind of stand up and make sure your arms are in a decent place to protect yourself. Absolutely. So Thiessen back in to take the draw. And he can't take it, so Yellowhead will get possession behind their own net. They'll, they'll go off the wall. And they'll circle it back into their own end. This is Logan Watton. And the Wheat Kings not letting them get any sort of sustained effort to get out of their own end. And there was a cherry picker. And the Wheat Kings let him in, but his shot goes just a little bit wide. That was number 21, Jake Poole. So now Mitch Thiessen gets it all the way down into Yellowhead's end in the close corner. And now the Wheat, Wheat Kings chasing it again. So Yellowhead will bring it across Wheat King's blue line. It's on the far side in the corner. That's Jake Poole again with it, but he gets hauled down. And Yellowhead will put it back to their blue line. It goes across, and now it's in the possession. Chad Nychuk went into the corner for it, but he's back to the blue line now, and he'll pick it up, just trying to bounce it in. But it can't go any further, and Jared Twerdeklib will pass it out. And here comes Carter Sawchuk. Carter Sawchuk, a major force in the first period, and already having an effect here in the second period. So it'll go back to the blue line. Keegan Morrison with the shot, and it was deflected by McCallum, and it'll go just a little bit wide of the net. So Yellowhead will try to pass it out, but it'll be intercepted by Jackson Orr. Orr plays it off to Morrison off his defender's skate. And here it is. It's McCallum again, but McCallum can't hang on to it. And Yellowhead almost got it out. And there's a shot from the point from Orr, and looks like yet made the another save shot Dukwich. from way far out. We're seeing a lot of those tonight. So the Wheat Kings have three shots this period. Yellowhead has none. That does not bode well for how this period is looking. It That's certainly does not, and the score is reflecting that. Especially after the early goal by Lyndon McCallum. Absolutely. Collier in the draw. And Tanner Morrison with a shot, but he can't get it on net. Morrison will fire it all the way down and into the corner. A close corner where Collier will, not Collier, uh, Tanner Morrison will battle for it. Now it's Collier on the sidewall. Yellowhead will get it and they'll put it out to the blue line. That's Drayson Collier who banged the puck into Yellowhead end, Yellowhead's end. And that one goes, looked like it went off, the, kind of rolling off the crossbar. 
And it'll come back out across the Wheat Kings blue line. And down. And that's a good catch of the pass by Tanner Morrison. Morrison chips it in front. And it looked like Kaspik was there. Kaspik the one with the deflection. And that'll be Mason Kaspik getting on the board with the goal. At least I think so. It, it was hard to tell from here. I think you're right, Jared. But it'll be Kaspik and Morrison involved in the goal. And that goal brought to you by my phone, your TELUS dealer. So it's 4 0. Wheat Kings lead in shots 16 to 13. And there's still 14 minutes and change to go. Mason Kaspik, assist number 21, Tanner Morrison, and number 5, Jackson Orr. Time to that goal, 1442. So Kaspik with the goal. It'll be a deflection off a shot from Tanner Morrison, and Cole Jordan gets the secondary assist. Or Jackson Orr, rather. Yes. So now the Wheat Kings have it in the corner again, and showing no signs of letting up. And there was a quick shot in front from Paddock, and it looks like that one will jump out of play. So, you know, Jared, the Wheat Kings really have a momentum going here. Wheat Kings have unprecedented amount of momentum right now. They're, they, I don't, I'm, I'm speechless. As am I, Jared. Yellowhead hasn't registered a shot on net this period yet. So, and there's another chance out oh in front. My and Dukovic definitely making, making, giving his team a little confidence in him, making that save. And that shot from uh, Ryland Thiessen goes just a little wide of the net. And there's a hit there, but that's going to be a trip on Colin Cook. And Cook will go in for another hit just to prove that he's not a, as dirty a player as the penalty would have you believe. And now we'll get the penalty call. And Colin Cook will take a seat on the bench. I'm going to I'm going to guess probably kneeing or tripping. I'd say that's a fair guess, Jared. But we will await the call. The Wheat Kings go on the penalty kill for, technically, I guess it's their third penalty. That it would be. And looks like Cole Jordan knows what's up, and he will head back to his defensive end where there will be a face-off. So it'll be Collier, Thompson, Jordan, and Paddock, or uh, Keegan Morrison instead of Cole Jordan, rather. Nychuk, Watton, Joseph. Uh, where, where and am? And number 21, Jake Poole, will be the offensive line for the Yellowhead Chiefs. This penalty kill brought to you by Farrah uh, Fitness. 19, so Nychuk with the pass across. Three, and yellow, Yellowhead to Poole. And Nychuk with the shot from the point and Morrison will get the block. So here's Nychuk again, and he feeds it across to Poole, and his shot will go over the net. Morrison has it in the corner, battling with two Yellowhead Chiefs there. And that one will get all the way out. That's a good defensive effort on this penalty kill. Wheat Kings will go wholesale change. Carter Sawchuk, Jared Twerdeklib, Ryland Thiessen, and Damon Hunt will be the penalty killers. Trent Miner gets his glove on that one and he'll hold on. So this is a five minute major, this penalty to Colin Cook. You know, Jared, this could be just what Yellowhead needs. This, this could be exactly what Yellowhead needs because if they score, Cook doesn't get to come out. So they that have was actually two two minutes. It's not five. Oh, it was, it's not oh, five it was, minutes. Yeah, it was a double minor. Yeah, so he's at four oh, minutes. Okay. My bad. Okay. Now that we've got that cleared up, Malchuk 
puts it across to his D partner, but he'll get it right back. He'll go close to his man, and that one will go in. Yellowhead is on the board, and I don't, I don't know. It was, it looked like it could have been a deflection. No, that was, uh, that was number eight, Owen Wareham. So Wareham with the shot and possible deflection. We'll have to wait for the call because I'm not sure. But if Owen Wareham was took the uh, original shot and Parker Malchuk set him up with that. So that's that's definitely what they needed at this point. Yellowhead on the board with their 16th shot of the night. And that shows you why you can't take bad knee penalty. Absolutely. So Tanner Dukovic will get the goal on a deflection. And Owen Wareham and Parker Malchuk will get the assists. So here comes Yellowhead again, and they'll take a low shot, and that one will come up with a rebound, and it goes over the net, and Jackson Orr makes the good play, and he will guide it to somewhat to safety, but Wareham with a fake slap shot. He got Miner down, and now there's a scramble in front, and they score again! They, they came back. It's, it's a two-goal game, and they... I believe that was number... It looked like number, number 23, 23 Tanner, Tanner Dukovic. Dukovic again. Dukovic with his second of the night, it looks like. From uh, number eight again, Owen Wareham. So Wareham, definitely a catalyst for the Chiefs right now. Absolutely. So Dukovic scores that goal unassisted and his second of the night. So, we're down to a 4-2 game, and there's still a lot of hockey to be played here. Now the Wheat Kings have the puck in, uh-oh, and it looks like a ref got hit up high. And he's down. Ouch. Well, he's back on his feet now, but I'm not sure what happened. It looks like he maybe got clipped by a stick. Well, at least he looks like he's all right now. So, things return to normal. Or somewhat normal. I don't know if you can call it normal anymore after two quick goals from Yellowhead. It's certainly, it's certainly exciting, Jared. They've definitely made this a game. And, like I said, lots of hockey to be played. Nolan Ritchie in for the draw with, against Wareham, but Ritchie will get it. And it's brought across by Keegan Morrison. Colin Cook now has the puck, and he tried to throw it in behind the net to his man, Nolan Ritchie. Ritchie with a shot, and that one will go into the corner and back to Ryland Thiessen. Thiessen, there's a sh shot from Damon Hunt. And Hunt will get that one back again, and he'll fire it in deep. It looks like Cook is battling for it with number 11, Zach Veit, uh, Veitch. Hunt goes across to Ryland Thiessen. Thiessen tried to go cross ice to Calder Anderson, and Anderson looks like he's gonna take a call for interference. Or is that? Yeah, it's gonna be number 14, Calder Anderson. Yep. That is not what the Wheat Kings need right now. Not at all. And that is Calder Anderson's second penalty of the night. So Anderson, and not the, not exactly the type you would expect to take that, that call. So, this penalty kill brought to you by Ferrum Fitness. The Wheat Kings on the penalty kill again, and already a lot of momentum going in Yellowhead's favor. 
Malchuk passes it up to Poole. Poole will carry it across the blue line. And he tries, and it goes across to Malchuk. Malchuk back to Poole. Poole back to Malchuk. Malchuk with a shot, and looks like Trent Miner got that one in the glove, and he will hang on. And if you haven't already done so, folks, you can pick up your 50-50 tickets. Shots are even at 19 apiece, and there's still over 10 minutes to go in this second period. Scores 4-2. I'd have to say Yellow Knife or Yellowhead is certainly surprising us. So the Wheat Kings, they put it out to the half wall, and Yellowhead will put it right back in behind the net. So the Wheat Kings, they couldn't get that one out. And looks like this time they will. Nope, that one will be held in again by Malchuk. So there's Poole. Poole in a battle with Jake Thompson. And he got the shot away, and that'll be a pad save by Trent Miner. Yellowhead, they've got it again, and that one will deflect off Thompson, and they will finally get that one out with 45 seconds to go on this penalty to Calder Anderson. Yellowhead, here comes Malchuk. Malchuk will feed it across to his D partner and Miner will play it. And that one will roll around the wall and Twerdic, Jared Twerdiklip will try to take down his man. So Yellowhead now has it along the half wall again and that one will get all the way out as well. 20 seconds to go on this penalty. Nychuk passes it across to his offensive. And there's a goal again, Chad Nychuk this time. Number four, Chad Nychuk. And all of a sudden, this is a one goal game. One goal. Wow. And Chad Nychuk, the six foot defenseman from Rossburn. It's as, if, it's as if the Chiefs just flipped a switch and suddenly they are just, they are fighting and they are not going down easy. Nychuk with his eighth goal of the year. And that's a solid total there. So the assist goes to Zane McDonald and that's his seventh assist of the season. So a decent, a decent start to the season for him and a way better second period for the Yellowhead Chiefs. Absolutely. And the Wheat Kings looked like they were gonna be the better team from the start with that goal. Yellowhead has the puck now in the corner and it will come out to the half wall. But it'll be given away and Brett Paddock will pick it up. Passes it off to Sawchuk. Here comes Ryland Thiessen, he brings it across the blue line and McCallum was way offside. So the faceoff will come back to outside of Yellowhead zone. No, the, go ahead. the Wee Kings are starting to pull out their offense, it would seem. We're starting to see the puck more and more in the Chiefs' end. And to be honest, I thought that was gonna happen right from the start. As did I. I don't know what happened, but it's certainly working for the Chiefs. Tanner Morrison will get the puck off the face off and he'll bring it inside the Yellowhead's end. So Drayson Collier has it now, and that puck will go back in behind the net. So here is Tanner Morrison. No, not Tanner Morrison, that's Mason Kaspik, who already has a goal tonight. And Morrison now battling with Col along with Collier, and there's Kaspik. Collier will pick it up at the half wall. He'll go across the ice to Cole Jordan, with a long shot, and that'll be gloved by Jeremy Dukowicz. Dukowicz all of a sudden starting to get a get a feel for how this game is turning out. Absolutely, that was yet another long shot from far from the net. And uh, you know, we haven't seen one of those in a while, Jared. It, it has been a while, and from Cole Jordan, you don't, you don't expect a lot of shots. No, you don't. Jordan, two goals so far, so not, a, not, a, not bad at all. But here comes Yellowhead. They throw it in, Trent Miner will play it, and Yellowhead will get it at the 
blue line. Now a battle along the half wall. And a shot from the side. Trent Miner will glove it and bring it in. 22 shots for Yellowhead so far. And it's... Momentum has completely swung around in this game. And Yellowhead looks like they're in complete control right now. This is absolutely mind-boggling. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen a game where momentum has just completely turned 180 degrees like it has today. They went so long without any shots on goal this period, and now they are ahead of the Wheat Kings. So now there's a battle at the blue line, and the puck will get out. And Sawchuk chased it, but nobody could get on the end of it. Here come the Wheat Kings again. They've got the puck just across the blue line now. And Yellowhead will try to rush it out one more time. And it'll go to Poole. Poole drives wide and trips up. Man following him. And an att attempt to get it out by Brett Paddock just doesn't work and he fanned on it. Now, Yellowhead will have to try to set up an offensive opportunity again. Now the Wheat Kings have it. They have a two-on-one. It's Carter Sawchuk and Lyndon McCallum, and the puck will come out just out across the blue line. And the Wheat Kings are back on side. But they have a man deep in their own end for the other team. Here's Colin Cook. He's on a breakaway. He's breaking away from his man, and it goes straight into the body of Dukowicz, who makes the save. That's good that offensive rec recognizing that you have a man open and free, but Cook just couldn't beat the goaltender Jeremy Dukowicz. I really thought Colin, th I really thought Colin Cook had something there, but just you know, nothing, nothing working for the Wheat Kings right now. Jeremy Dukowicz is certainly pulling out all the stops. So now it's the Wheat Kings. They have it at the blue line. That's Damon Hunt with a long shot, and that'll be gloved down by Dukowicz as well. So the shots are even, and, oh, they're not even, my bad. Nope. 23 to 22 for the Wheat Kings. The Wheat Kings have pulled ahead again. So with six minutes and change left in this second period, and there's a sh good attempt, Calder Anderson, and looks like there will be a face-off to the left of Jeremy Dukowicz. Six minutes and four seconds left. I, that is a lot of time left. There's a lot of time left, 26 minutes in this game, and either team looking like they could pull away in this one. So nobody could come away with the puck right off the faceoff, but the Chiefs will finally get away with it, and now they'll be offside. So Ryland Thiessen retreats to pick up the puck, and he'll throw it in behind to Damon Hunt. The Wheat Kings just not getting anything going their way right now. Hunt with it in behind the net. Hunt with a long pass to Cook, and Cook will just deflect it down into Yellowhead's end. And now Yellowhead is reach, uh, coming back, and it will be offside again. So the amount of stopping and starting in this game right now seems to be a bit of a factor as well. No, no. team can really build up a flow. No kidding. We're, it seems every minute or so, not even, we're having stoppages. We went, looks like about 55 seconds without a stop there. So now there's a battle along the half wall. Yellowhead with a man in. And he hold, hauls down his guy. So the puck goes to the opposite corner. Wheat Kings trying to carry it out. And they will get it out. It's Mason Kaspic. Kaspic throws to the front for Tanner Morrison. And Morrison can't get a handle. Kaspic was battling, and now Yellowhead has it in their own end, and they will get it out across the blue line. 
to a man with speed, and here's Poole. And now the Wheat Kings are starting to play with a little bit more confidence again. And they're getting, getting some bounces to go their way now. So it bounces high off the glass, and Zach Ve uh, Veach will stop it. Brett Paddock is chasing it, and unfortunately just can't get there in time. And it'll be icing against the Wheat Kings. So four minutes and 11 seconds to go. You know, Jared, at, from the difference between the start of this period and now is absolutely stunning. It's it's almost like night and day difference. This this Yellowhead club that came into the second period with no momentum has come out and scored three goals in this period unanswered. Meanwhile, the Wheat Kings have just plateaued. So now the puck goes in behind Wheat Kings net and Jordan will fire it out. Yellowhead will put it back in and Jordan will collect it in, in his own corner. Paddock tried to grab it and it goes right to the Wheat Kings net on a long shot from number four, Chad Nychuk. And Miner will hold on for a face off. So the shots are back to even at 23 apiece. 3.51 to go in the third, uh, second period. Once again, that is still a lot of time and a lot can happen. So Nychuk gets the puck off the face off and tried to put one through the traffic, but it is stopped by Damon Hunt. And there's another long shot, and Miner will glove that one down. It's, it's funny that they would go back to the long shot strategy, because that really hasn't worked for either team. It really hasn't, and yet we're seeing it more and more from both teams. So now a draw to the right of Trent Miner, and it'll come back to Nychuk. Nychuk with a slap shot, but it'll be stopped by Brett Paddock. And here come the Wheat Kings again. It's Lyndon McCallum, and he's got Carter Sawchuk with him, and he just can't get on the other end of that pass. A great opportunity for the Wheat Kings to pull ahead by two again. Yellowhead now has the puck in Brandon's end, the far corner. And it looks like a penalty called against Yellowhead. So we've got a delayed penalty here. And Calder Anderson tried the shot, but the Chiefs will get on to the end of that shot. And now it's going to be a power play for the Brandon Wheat Kings. And this power play brought to you by GT Hockey. Tanner Morrison, Nolan Ritchie, Lyndon McCallum, Brett Paddock, and Damon Hunt out there for this power play. These are a bunch of players that have had a lot of success this season. Richie in for the draw, and he can't get onto it. So it'll be thrown out by Malchuk. Malchuk will fire it all the way down to Miner. Miner will drop it off for Damon Hunt. Hunt will pass it up to McCallum. McCallum with a, another pass. That just didn't go anywhere. And Dukowicz makes the save on a quick shot from the side. And Damon Hunt has the puck. Now Paddock, the other, def the other defender, and that one will be brought down with a high stick. You know, so, Jared, with, with all the momentum that the Chiefs had gained, this penalty does not look good for them. No, the Chiefs, if they get a good kill out of this, the Chiefs will have a ton of momentum coming out of it. Especially considering this is Joseph's third penalty of the night. Third penalty of the night. So Damon Hunt retreats and picks up the puck at his own blue line. And he will just drag it in. And there's the pass to McCallum, and that one will be tossed way up and out. Brett Paddock has the puck in behind his net. There's 59 seconds left on this penalty kill. Nolan Ritchie will bring it across the blue line, and that puck will go into the corner. Here's Ritchie. Ritchie on it again. Here's Tanner Morrison. Morrison will pass to Anderson, Calder Anderson, and 
just nothing going for the Wheat Kings right now. A tremendous amount of momentum right now for Yellowhead. So here come the Wheat Kings again. Calder Anderson, he's got the puck up on edge, so he'll pass it off to Keegan Morrison. Morrison brings it across the blue line and will pass it right back to Anderson. Anderson back to Morrison. Morrison with a slap shot, and that one will be deflected. So the Wheat Kings have it in behind the net. Here's Carter Sawchuk. Sawchuk back to Keegan Morrison. Morrison right across to uh, Calder Anderson. There's a shot again. And I'm not sure what the ref whistled down there. Looks like the net came off. So the Wheat Kings with a great offensive opportunity on that power play. Five seconds to go in the penalty. Indeed, that is that was Colin Cook's second close call of the night. So Colin Cook definitely getting the offensive opportunities, just needs to capitalize. Absolutely. So five seconds left in this penalty. Carter Sawchuk in to take the face off for the Wheat Kings. No, it'll be Drayson Collier switching out for Sawchuk. And the Wheat Kings just kind of rushed the dot on that one. And the Chiefs couldn't get it out after the power play came to an end. So now that they've got five men aside, Malchuk will bring it across and throw it in. Colin Cook picks it up. He'll hand it off to Brett Paddock. Paddock tried to go to Jared Twerdeklib, but he couldn't get it on the end of that one. And Thompson tried to go to Keegan Morrison, but Morrison was being bothered by uh, Poole. There's a shot from the blue line. That's Nychuk. Chad Nychuk with a slap shot from the point, and Miner will make the glove save. You know, Jared, I got to say, the, the Chiefs are certainly using a strong offense right now because right after that... Uh, power play was over, it was not long before the puck was back in the Wheat Kings end and they were, staying there. They were right back in. There is nothing going the Wheat Kings way right now. Paddock will pick the puck up at the half wall. He'll try to put it out, but there's a battle now, and it'll go to Carter Sawchuk. Sawchuk will put it out to Nolan Ritchie. Ritchie put it off the skates of Nychuk. And it looks like that's the end of this second period. Four to three, the score, as we go to a break. This is Manitoba AAA Midget Hockey on the Manitoba Sports Network. SAR Sport and Recreation in Steinbeck, where the Husqvarna Motorcycle, Polaris ORV, and Polaris Slingshot Dealer. Along with full sales of new and used, we offer service, parts, and sales for everything. Come and see us in Steinbeck.
Hi, I'm Melanie uh, from Melanie Bond and Athletic Therapy. I deal with rehab here, and one of the treatments that I use is massage, some mobilizations, and there are many other techniques that I take care of to help heal injuries. I treat sports injuries, workplace injuries, motor vehicle accident injuries, and I direct bill to MPI, WCB, and other third-party insurers. Thank you. Come see us. Welcome to MB Seeds. I'm Matt and this is B, and we're a family-run business. We've been operating since 2012 and we sell canola, soybeans, corn, wheat, barley, oats, and peas. We also run a cleaning facility on site just south of Low Farm where we can clean almost anything that you can grow. Come check us out today. Welcome back to the Sportsplex here in Brandon for AAA Midget Hockey League action. Right now I'm talking with Brody Wilson of the Yellowhead Chiefs. Thank you for joining us tonight. Yeah, no problem. So, Brody, your team comes into this game with a 7-6 and six record, which is good enough to keep you in playoff contention. So, what is your team's mentality moving forward just to... Um, well, I think just to get stronger every game is a must for us, and since we're a young team, it's a lot of learning to go through, and I think we're getting better every game so far. And tonight, your team has been had an outstanding second period. To come back from a 2 nothing deficit to be down four, only 4-3 four against this Brandon Wheat King squad is pretty solid. So, what, what is your team's mentality now going into the third period? Um, just uh, keep pressure on them and um, uh, always just pretty much uh, working hard like they have all game and just hopefully get the bounces. And so you're, you've been, your team has been, you've had some solid goaltending tonight from Jeremy Dukowicz. What is, does he, does he give you that extra element of confidence just that you know that you have a solid goaltender behind you? Yeah, I would say so. We've, he's played at this level before, so he knows what it takes to win, and 
Yeah, he's just an overall good goalie. Awesome. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. We will be back with your second period summary of action that will be brought to you by Pantages. And that will be coming up in just a little bit here on the Manitoba Sports Network. SAR Sport and Recreation in Steinbeck. We're the Husqvarna Motorcycle, Polaris ORV, and Polaris Slingshot dealer. Along with full sales of new and used, we offer service, parts, and sales for everything. Come and see us in Steinbeck. Welcome back to the Brandon Sportsplex for AAA Midget Hockey League action. Brandon AAA Midget Wheat Kings currently lead the Yellowhead Chiefs 4-3. And that was a really weird second period, Marshall. What what do you think went on with for that? I honestly don't know. It was a, as if a few minutes into the period, the Chiefs just flipped a switch and they were... They, suddenly they were fighting hard and they were... They were not going easy on the Wheat Kings anymore. Absolutely not. And part of that, I would say, is because somehow Yellowhead came ahead, came out ahead in shots again. Absolutely. They came ahead with uh, 12 shots on goal, whereas the Wheat Kings only had 11. However, they were only ahead by one. 
but they did end up getting more goals with three goals scored in that period and only two scored before, by the Wheat Kings. So one of the one of the biggest problems was the Wheat Kings got into penalty trouble and it wasn't even that they took a lot of penalties, it was that they took one big one. That was right with... Uh, with so uh, Colin, Colin Cook took a four minute double minor and Yellowhead capitalized twice on that power play. That they did, and that certainly gave them the boost that they needed to uh, put themselves back in this game with the Wheat Kings. So the Wheat Kings come away with three power plays in that period. Yeah, Just, the Chiefs had their share of penalties as well. It was quite quite amazing, really. This this game shaping up to be a lot closer than I expected, and I I predicted it to be close, but I yeah, didn't expect did. it to be this close. Absolutely. So, Wheat Kings leading four to three, and we've got about two and a half minutes until we get back into game action, and it should be an exciting two and a half, 20 minutes of hockey in this third period. It certainly will be, Jared. with Fair & Fitness, we're located in Ildiche, Manitoba. We do everything from personal training, group training classes, yoga and flexible steel. We also focus on young athletes. We do not only just the strength and conditioning, but the agility, power, rotational control and strength, and flexibility, stability, and mobility is always super important. You can find us at fairfitness.ca and come check us out. Welcome back to the Brandon Sportsplex. We have Triple A Midget Hockey League action. The Wheat Kings leading 4-3 to three over the Yellowhead Chiefs, and we have begun this third period. Nychuk will start the period, and he will throw the pass to the center area, and the Wheat Kings will pick the puck up in their own end. There's Brendan McCallum. McCallum throws the puck off to Brett Paddock, but he can't get on the end of it, and the Yellowhead Chiefs will pick it up in their own end. Here's Carter Sawchuk. Sawchuk trying to get a hold on the puck in the corner. Yellowhead will pick it up though and Nychuk will carry it out to center. He'll bring it across the blue line looking for a man and he can't find one so he'll fire it towards the net and missed by just a few, just a little bit. Now the puck goes the other way and here comes Carter Sawchuk but he gets stick lifted and Nychuk will pick it up. So here's Malchuk. Malchuk has the puck behind the net. He'll bring it out in front and will carry it across his team's blue line and fire it in deep. Trent Miner will stop it. And Calder Anderson will pick it up. Tries to hold it in, but he can't. He'll hold it out of his own zone. And here come the Wheat Kings again. Malchuk couldn't get his stick on the puck. And the shot goes in! It's Calder Anderson with a deflection in front. The Wheat Kings are up, and it's 5-3. to three. Brennan Wheat Kings. That is, Cal and that is Calder Anderson's second goal of the night as well. I'm fairly certain it was Anderson. I don't know how that could have gone in any other way. Tremendous goal for the Wheat Kings, whatever happened, as that gives them the 5-3 to three lead. So a full line change. Drayson Collier will go in for the faceoff. There's... Wheat Kings will win it, and Tegan Morrison will throw it out. So, pardon me, that was Colin Cook with the goal from the side. So Colin Cook finally puts one at home from Damon Hunt. Yes, and he's had, he's had his share of close calls tonight, so that was, it was good to see him get one in. Cook has definitely been a, a player to watch tonight as well. Drayson Collier in for the draw again, and he can't get on it, but the Wheat Kings will pick it up anyway. Collier 
It'll go in behind the net to Tanner Morrison. Or Mason Kaspik, rather. Kaspik back to Collier. Collier will drop it down to Kaspik again. Kaspik pushes that one along the wall. And there's Kaspik with a shot, and that one will go in behind the net. And there's some big pushing and shoving going, going on right now. Kaspik again, but it comes out to the Wheat Kings blue line. The Chiefs carrying it across, and the Wheat Kings will be forced to battle for it along the half wall. And now it'll come back to the blue line to Malchuk, and it'll come back into the half wall but the Wheat Kings will get a handle on it and Tanner Morrison will finally get it out of his own end. There's a big hit there. Looks like Reese Richmond and it's gonna be called for interference, looks like. Two minutes, two minutes for interference. Two-minute interference call going against the Yellowhead Chiefs, which they really did not need at this time in the game. No, that is the last thing that the Yellowhead Chiefs need right now. There's two and a half minutes gone in this third period. And looks like they're starting to chat with the players. This power play for the Brandon Wheat Kings brought to you by my phone, your TELUS dealer. Damon Hunt gets the puck off the faceoff. And he'll go D to D. Lyndon McCallum with a good pass. And that save is made by, by Jeremy Dukovic. There's a lot of yapping going on between the players right now. And the refs definitely having to make sure that they don't let any of that go too far. No kidding. These players do not seem happy right now. So Nolan Ritchie in for the faceoff. Lynn McCallum almost got it off the faceoff. But Yellowhead, looks like Yellowhead will get away with one and they will squirt that way out to center. It'll be thrown right back in by the Wheat Kings, number 17, Brett Paddock. Damon Hunt, here's McCallum. McCallum with a pass and good, there's a good setup there. And that one, shot just fired wide. And a, a bit of a late hit there on Nolan Ritchie. And Yellowhead will clear that one out all the way down to Trent Miner. Miner tried to go up all the way to Ritchie, but it got looks like it hit somebody in the in the it cage. Was blocked by McCallum's face. Oh. So the Wheat Kings will try to recoil again. And Keegan Morrison easily dodges a check. Looking for a man. And he puts it down the wall, but it is intercepted. And Cole Jordan, or Calder Anderson rather, is forced to retreat for it. Here comes Ryland Thiessen. Thiessen turns back and will try it again. Grayson Collier was looking for the pass, but it was deflected away. And now it's Keegan Morrison at inside his own zone. And there's Calder Anderson. Anderson just pondering. No, looks like the power play is over for the Wheat Kings. So McDonald is out. Keegan Morrison waiting for the trailer. He's got Jared Twerdeklib. Twerdeklib puts that one high and wide and caught Carter Sawchuk out front in the face. And Twerdeklib almost had a, had a great chance there going for his first point of the season. That was a really close one there. And here's Thompson. Thompson will put that one across for Morrison and Morrison will fire it in deep. So now the Chiefs are recoiling and 
that pass will go all the way down to Trent Miner, who will cover up. Ladies and gentlemen, get out your 50-50 tickets. We'll announce the winning numbers at the next stop of your play. That was 26th shot on Trent Miner tonight. And that pulls the uh, that pulls Yellowhead ahead in shots on goal. Only by one, but ahead nonetheless. And right now, Jared, uh, Yellowhead needs all the shots on goal that they can take. That is exactly right. With just under 15 minutes to go, you need you need to shoot, especially after giving up an early one here in the third period. So the Wheat Kings have it in behind their own net. Keegan Morrison will go to Cole Jordan. Jordan again. Back to Thompson. Thompson went to Collier. Or not Collier, but he went up to Nolan Ritchie. Now the Wheat Kings are battling in behind the net. Calder Anderson is in there. And the puck will come out right to Keegan Morrison who takes a shot, but it's blocked by Yellowhead. So here comes Yellowhead again, and that one will go all the way around, and Trent Miner can't stop it, but it'll make it out across the blue line. Grayson Collier went in for a bit of a late hit there, but nothing happened. So Collier has it right in center, and here comes Colin Cook now. Scored, it, scored his first goal of the game earlier this period. And the pass was intercepted by Ryland Thiessen, who fired it into Yellowhead's end again. And now a pass intercepted by Tanner Morrison. Yellowhead, they're breaking out again. This is Brian Kentuck. And now it's a two-on-one, and Yellowhead just couldn't get the pass away and Trent Miner makes another save. Ticket numbers for a pair of Wheat King tickets. Winning number is 23579. 23579. And for Trent Miner has looked solid on pretty much every shot he's faced. He really seems to have changed since the second period. He has switched gears and he is not letting anything past him anymore. And I don't know that even the shot, the goals in the second period were exactly him to blame. No, absolutely. So, Yellowhead will try to put that one back out of their end. Lyndon McCallum will pick up the puck behind Yellowhead's net, but Yellowhead will get it out and across their blue line. There's a high hit by Carter Sawchuk. And Yellowhead now. Oh. I was wrong, Brandon had it all along. But Yellowhead picks it up at their own blue line and trying to force it back into Brandon's end. Here's Carter Sawchuk. Sawchuk gives it away and now Yellowhead will force it in again. Shooting it in was Colby Joseph. So Ryland Thiessen. Puts it out to Yellowhead's blue line. Nychuk will pass it away and he'll pick it back up again. Nychuk bringing it across center. Brings it into Brandon's end, but looks like offside. And somebody lost a stick. That was number six, uh, Ray Rooks. So the faceoff just outside Brandon's end, 12 minutes and change left in the third period. 27-25 the shots, and five to three. Brandon Wheat Kings lead it. Still a lot of time to go, but... Lots of time. But that is the last thing that you want to tell Yellowhead right now. Absolutely. They have got some serious ground to cover. So Yellowhead picks up the puck in their own end, and the puck will squirt around to the half wall. And now it's Colby... It's number 14, Colby Joseph. Trying to race the puck out into Brandon's end, and... Looks like a power play for Yellowhead. That's going to be Mitch Thiessen taking the penalty. That is not good for the weekends. 
Wheat Kings have already given up a couple power play goals tonight, so you really don't want to give up another one here and let Yellowhead within one. This is precisely what worked for the Chiefs in past periods. Nolan Ritchie got the puck away on a breakaway oh. and they score shorthanded. Nolan Ritchie set up Calder Anderson, six to three Wheat Kings. Now that is Calder Anderson's second goal of the night. And Anderson, Anderson just following right along with the play as Nolan Ritchie knows what he needs to do when he has the puck. Sometimes he just can't do it. <laughs> I mean, but you can't really always, you can't fault him on that. I, that was, that, that was, was like a flash before my eyes. That was something to watch. Absolutely. And on a penalty kill, no less. So, so Calder Anderson with his with another goal tonight. And Nolan Ritchie assisting it. Short-handed goal for the Wheat Kings. And the Wheat Kings will clear the puck on the PK. That's good work. And they've so there's a cherry picker down in Brandon's end. Zane McDonald will bring the puck across the blue line. But now it's Malchuk. Malchuk has the puck and he'll turn it back to his own blue line. And now the Wheat Kings will get a hold of it again and fire it all the way down to goaltender Jeremy Dutwich. So Yellowhead, they have it in Brandon's end now. And there's a shot from the court right in close. They just couldn't beat Trent Miner over the shoulder. And it looks like another penal penalty going to the Wheat Kings. And there's the whistle as Cole Jordan touches up. And it looks like it's gonna be roughing. So Cole Jordan taking the penalty call on this one. Wow. I said corrected, it's not gonna be roughing. Uh, maybe boarding. That is Cole Jordan's second penalty of the night. So this has been, this has just been one of those games where. We penalty number seven, Cole Jordan. Oh, and a shot off the post. Wow. Right off the draw. And another one off the post. Back-to-back oh. -back shots from Chad Nychuk off the post. And Yellowhead just can't buy a goal right now. So there's Vayich. Nychuk. There's the pass across. And there's a save as Trent Miner makes the save on that one. Wow. So this, this PK of the Brandon Wheat Kings is brought to you by Farron Farum Fitness. Wow, Chad Nychuk with shot after shot and so close, but nothing on Trent Miner. Some incredible chances, and this is a five on three. So, Yellowhead can really move the puck just about wherever they want. Absolutely, they can. And they are certainly taking advantage of that right now. So, Drayson Collier gets the puck out, and finally the five on three is over. So now it's just Cole Jordan in the box. And Drayson Collier will put that one all the way down into Yellowhead's end. Minute 10 seconds on this penalty. And Thompson going in with a late hit, and I'm not sure why. He really didn't need to make that hit. Malshot can't hold the puck in, and he'll go off far side. And Yellowhead will enter Wheat King's zone again. Malchuk just can't hold it in. And I'm not sure what, what happened there, why the ref blew it down. Uh, I'm guessing I'm it must sure. have gone out of play or something. Whatever the case, 46 seconds to go on this penalty to Cole Jordan. Nolan Ritchie in to take the draw for the Wheat Kings. And there's Calder Anderson again, already got a shorthanded goal in this period. Calder Anderson pressuring Malchuk, but Malchuk will make the smart play 
and go back to his D partner. Now it's back to Malchuk. Malchuk skates it across the blue line, and there's a hit from behind. Not a hard one, but enough to let him know he was there. And now Yellowhead will put it back to the blue line. There's Nychuk. Nychuk goes cross ice to Malchuk, and Malchuk tried to go cross ice, and a save from in tight by Trent Miner. Here's Malchuk again. Malchuk will go far side, and Nolan Ritchie will get a hold of it, and he'll clear it all the way out to finish off this penalty kill on the Cole Jordan pen penalty. Malchuk will go far side to his man. This is Chad Nychuk. Nychuk brings it in, and the shot is taken away from him. Brett Paddock will try to get it out. There's Paddock again. It's a three on two. Paddock to McCallum. Lyndon McCallum goes over the net and that one will squirt right back out across Yellowhead's blue line. And there's Jake Poole with the shot and that one goes over the net too. Now it's Ryland Thiessen. Ryland Thiessen will go far side to Brett Paddock. Paddock will force that one out. And it will be brought down by Malchuk back to McCallum. Dukowicz oh. almost gave it away to Carter Sawchuk with a good chance there. And wow. Jeremy Dukowicz almost, almost gave the Wheat Kings a chance at a seventh goal of the game. You know, Jared, the Wheat Kings gave, gave the Chiefs just about every opportunity with those uh, couple power plays there, and they just couldn't seem to get anything out of it. Nothing was going Brandon's way in the second period. Nothing's going Yellowhead's way this period. Now the Wheat Kings have almost had got control in Yellowhead's end. Now Yellowhead will bring it across the red line. It'll be swept away from Zane McDonald and thrown into the corner, and. Now Yellowhead will bring it around. McDonald going into the corner to battle with number 23, Tanner Dukowicz. And Drayson Collier will go in to help his man. And We Kings will get it out. There's number 21, Tanner Morrison. He'll get that one across the blue line and in to in deep in Yellowhead territory, but Yellowhead will pick it up and they'll come away. This is Malchuk again. Malchuk with a shot, and it looked like it went off the pad of Trent Miner. Wheat Kings will force that one out again. And it's like Braden Michaelchuk kept that puck in, and he'll send it deep for Mitch Thiessen to try to grab. Wheat Kings fourth line really working hard right now to make sure they get, they don't give Yellowhead any good opportunities. There's a shot from the far side and it whistles just wide in the net. And now another penalty call. Looks like it's going against Brandon again. And here come the Chiefs but Brandon will touch up. Pierce Martin was the one chasing, just couldn't get a handle on it. And the Wheat Kings will go to the penalty, penalty kill once again. Penalty kill for the Brandon Wheat Kings brought to you by Ferrum Fitness. And it's Mitch Thiessen again. And that's, that would be his second this period, I believe. So Mitch Thiessen going, getting the gate again. And the Wheat King is just not, not helping themselves right now. No, this Nichuk. Wheat King number eight, Mitch Thiessen, two minutes for roughly. Time to that penalty, five twenty-eight. So Thiessen gets two minutes for roughing, and the Wheat King's not helping themselves with penalties like that. No, this may be the last opportunity the Chiefs get, though. The last the penalty power play, at least. Well, Yellowhead has it now in behind the Wheat Kings net. 
It'll try to force it out front. And there's Nychuk. He tried to pass it off though, and he will give it away. The Wheat Kings will force it all the way down again. Dukowicz fires it around the glass, and the Wheat Kings force it in back again. Just over a minute left in this power play. And the Wheat Kings doing good forechecking on the on the penalty kill. Not some not a strategy you see very often. So here comes Nychuk. Nychuk brings it across the center line. He'll pass it away, and the Chiefs gain the Wheat Kings blue line. And that puck will be shot back into neutral zone territory. And here comes Brett Paddock. Paddock. He has Collier, and Collier oh. couldn't get on the end of that pass. And that could have been another, that was another opportunity for the Wheat Kings to make this a 7-3 game. That was a really close one. Jackson Orr took a shot high, and was able to get back to recover defensively. Grayson Collier battling for the puck along the wall. The puck is at the blue line and Grayson Collier will block that one and it will go out into center ice again. Malchuk just could, can't get it, get past Grayson Collier today. And the Wheat Kings will throw it all the way down and in behind Yellowhead's net. Malchuk. Fires it to his own blue line. Carter Sawchuk racing in, trying to beat Yellowhead to the puck. And the Wheat Kings just buzzing right now. And they are off of the penalty kill now, so they can set up an offensive attack. Damon Hunt has the puck. He'll drag it in behind the Wheat Kings, the Yellowhead net, and around. And now there's a battle in the, on the side wall for it. The Wheat Kings pass just couldn't find the man they were looking for. Carter Sawchuk will fire it right back in. Just over two and a half minutes left in this game. And that's a clear trip. And Yellowhead will get called for this. Congratulations to Ann Lee, winner of a pair of Wheat King tickets, and to Gabe Richmond, winner of $117. So the Wheat Kings come away with another power play power play for the Wheat Kings brought to you by GT Hockey and the Wheat Kings are behind in shots by three but they are well ahead in score they have Odd, oddly also by three yeah currently <laughs> currently doubling up the Yellowhead Chiefs six to three and now they have a two-minute power play on a tripping call to number seven Caden uh, Quain. Things are really looking good for them. Sawchuk gets the puck across the blue line. He feeds it off to Drayson Collier. Collier goes back to the blue line, but it'll come right back to him as his man was covered. So here comes Collier. Collier goes back to the blue line, back to Calder Anderson. Anderson will go to Keegan Morrison. Morrison goes to Collier. Collier right back to him. There's Morrison with a shot, and that one will go over the net. And Lyndon McCallum will come away with it. McCallum back to Anderson. Anderson back to Morrison. Calder Anderson with a shot, and that one whistles just wide of the net for another opportunity for Calder Anderson. Drayson Collier goes back to Keegan Morrison. Morrison back to Calder Anderson. Anderson with a shot, and that one's low on the ice. And stopped by... Dukewicz. Shot, uh, shot from Keegan Morrison was deflected on the way to the net and Yellowhead will bring it out and there's a shot but that one will go over the net and out of play. You know Jared after just seeing another one of those long far out shots I think uh, the one Keegan Morrison had just a moment ago was probably cl the closest we've seen coming to an actual goal tonight. Probably it was a it was a great shot, and just not not the reward that Morrison was looking for. No, it certainly wasn't. So there's a tie wasn't. up in the draw, and the Wheat Kings will carry it out of their own end. Here's Damon Hunt. Damon Hunt goes for it, and the Wheat Kings score. 
that's another goal for the Brandon Wheat Kings. That's a power play goal. 30 seconds to go in this power play. Just under a minute to go and the Wheat Kings score. Wow. That Looks is... like that was number 18, Lyndon McCallum. And that was, that was McCallum's second goal of the night. And fourth of the season. Wow. McCallum, if, McCallum, for those who don't know, was just reassigned to the AAA Wheat Kings from the WHL's Brandon Wheat Kings. And this is only his third game. So McCallum having a great night. He certainly Chiefs. is. The Chiefs will get it off the draw and they'll force it away, but not very far away. And Michael Chuck will carry it across the blue line. At number 17, Brent Paddock. Time of the goal, 56 seconds. So it sound, sounds to me, or it looks to me like Brandon is walking away from this one with a, you don't want to say an easy win, but they battled hard and they deserve to come out on top in this one. They certainly do. They have, both teams have fought a hard game, but ultimately it seems the Wheat Kings are coming out on top. Wheat Kings put another shot to the net there and looks like that puck went out of play. So we've got another face-off in this game with 8.1 seconds to go. Four goals in 8.1 seconds is a difficult task. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I. And it looks like they're following the tradition set by the WHL Wheat Kings and playing Sweet Caroline when they're winning and close to the end of the game. And Mitch Thiessen wins the face-off. Cole Jordan will just carry it back into his own end. And time expires. Seven to three win. Brandon Wheat Kings come away with the win. And there they go, playing Sweet Caroline again. <laughs> what an exciting game. That was, that was an it. I've, I've got to say that second period sure stands out like a sore thumb. It does. The Wheat Kings were so out of it, it seemed, in the second period. It really and did seem that way, but they I don't know what happened in the third period, but they pulled it back together. You, What is there to say? <laughs> and one of the greatest traditions in hockey, the handshake line. Tremendous amount of respect between these players, as there should be. Absolutely. We will come back with a post-game show in just a little bit to wrap up this Manitoba Midget Hockey League action game here at the Brandon Sportsplex in just a little bit. SAR Sport and Recreation in Steinbeck. We're the Husqvarna Motorcycle, Polaris ORV, and Polaris Slingshot dealer. Along with full sales of new and used, we offer service, parts, and sales for everything. Come and see us in Steinbeck. Melanie uh, from Melanie Bond and Athletic Therapy. 
I deal with rehab here. And one of the treatments that I use is massage, some mobilizations, and there are many other techniques that I take care of to help heal injuries. I treat sports injuries, workplace injuries, motor vehicle accident injuries, and I direct bill to MPI, WCB, and other third party insurers. Thank you, come see us. Welcome to MB Seeds. I'm Matt and this is B, and we're a family run business. We've been operating since 2012 and we sell canola, soybeans, corn, wheat, barley, oats, and peas. We also run a cleaning facility on site just south of Low Farm where we can clean almost anything that you can grow. Come check us out today. Well, welcome back to the Brandon Sportsplex after some exciting midget AAA hockey action between the Brandon Midget Wheat Kings and, of course, the Yellowhead Chiefs. And the final score doesn't really reflect how close this game was. It really doesn't. The, the scoreboard says 3-7, to seven, but it was a lot closer than that up until fairly close to the end of the game. The Wheat, the Wheat Kings did come out as the better team in the first and third periods. Oh, absolutely. But I wouldn't, I would be hesitant to say that they were the better team all game. Yeah, that second period was, I'd say that was definitely the Chiefs to take home. So shots on goal in the third period were 6-6. Six to six which actually is fairly low total. That, that it is. That was the first time they were even all game as well. Uh, every, uh, the past couple periods, uh, the Chiefs were always ahead, only by one, but they, ahead nonetheless. And final shot totals for the game, 31 to 29, with the Chiefs taking that. What, and the, the power plays in this game there was there were so many of them that and they were very instrumental in the 
in the end result. And there were so here. many of them. The the Wheat Kings, obviously their power play was superb, as well as Yellowheads. Yellowheads power play was one of the keys for them actually getting on the board in the first place. And towards the end there, the Wheat Kings actually managed to score a goal on a penalty kill. They did. Which was impressive in its own. No, uh, Nolan Ritchie feeding Calder Anderson for that goal that really that shorthanded goal sealed the deal oh absolutely and it was immediately after the penalty was called too it was the puck was dropped and it was it was in the, the net. puck was going right back the other way well thank you very much for tuning in we hope that you enjoyed our coverage of Manitoba AAA hockey here in Brandon and we hope you'll join us again next Saturday when the AAA Wheat Kings are back here at the Sportsplex taking on the East Men Selects. Hope you'll join us then and have a great evening. SAR Sport and Recreation in Steinbeck. We're the Husqvarna Motorcycle, Polaris ORV, and Polaris Slingshot dealer. Along with full sales of new and used, we offer service, parts, and sales for everything. Come and see us in Steinbeck.